Right, cool, we are now recording, so I can officially start the lesson. So, hello, hello everyone. Uh, if you're new or you're watching this and this is the first of the videos that you're watching, um, I'm Tim, you know, kind of instructor, teachery person at the Old Soul Club normally, and now online instructor and teachery person while we do these live streams. Um, so tonight we're going to look at auxiliary parries. Um, so those are basically parries that um, yep. Oh, sorry, we got a question. Oh, I want to throw yourself back on Tim's recording. I'll just to save. Um, yeah, probably a good idea to mute yourselves. That's usually usually ask that people be muted whilst I'm teaching, just because um, I find if you get back down, background noises or enthusiastic dogs and stuff, which is a particularly peril for me, um, that can sort of mess with things. Um, but yeah, so we're looking at auxiliary parries, which are basically the Additional parries other than the sort of normal sort of you know TS Tart, you know, high low variants, maybe also Septim and Second are kind of core parries, but I don't treat them as such because I have kind of an odd approach to this, I think. Um, but yeah, in a lot of traditional 19th century British manuals, the core parries are, you know, Cart, Tears, um, Second, and team um, basically same hand positions as you're using for the cuts. So now we're going to use look at like different parries. Um, the basic reason why you want to have more than one parry for every line of attack is um, that you know if you keep parrying the same way, you're going to become predictable. That lets you makes you not only vulnerable to feints, but if the person wants to counter a post and they know how you're going to parry, they know what your most likely repost is going to be. Um, and so they might like hang around really close to tempt you to throw a really fast repulse that they, and then they can act um, faster because they know what's coming. Um, so you want to be able to vary up your defense. Um, that's kind of just a thing with most combat sports. And I think also this is why when you get away from military manuals that are just designed to teach basic sword fighting to soldiers, uh, so when you, you get into even things that are supposed to be for soldiers but were not very popular with the military, they were, but were very popular with civilian fences like Alfred Hutton's Cold Steel and Swordsman, um, they have multiple parries for the same lines of attack. Um, before we kind of launch into it, um, I do have kind of an announcement. Um, I've made my own pair of gloves, which I'm exceedingly proud of. So I'm just going to throw them off to the camera. Oops. Um, so yeah, I've got a, I mean, I make most of my own gloves because I have weird, like, really long hands, um, or really narrow hands for someone my height, so I have, like, you know, very slender fingers, I guess. Um, I, I guess all of me is just, like, long and slender, but, you know, um, that, that takes so much context. The other thing as well is, um, I'll see how I go um, tonight wearing this jacket, or if I can get warm enough not to wear this jacket, but it is kind of freezing where I am in the mountains, so. I'm going to be all rugged up. Um, all right, so again, for those who might be new or those watching the first time, uh, these lessons currently are in this thing, the Sabre, specifically 19th century British Sabre, and more specific than that, the kind of Sabre fencing that was done in like the late 19th century. So we're talking like 1870s, 1870s, 1880s, 1890s. Um, but obviously I look at things from earlier because, you know, some sources just hung around and were very influential through since their um, the beginnings. Uh, tonight, if you see me, I'm actually going to be using one of these, which is a single stick. So this is a period training weapon. It was kind of a cheap and nasty sabre trainer. Um, and it's not until the 19th century, actually, that metal sabres like this one um, become common enough that, you know, they can be kind of standard. Um, I won't be wearing the basket though, just so I think it makes it a bit easier to see if you can see my hand. Um, and the main reason I'm using this is that it's just a lot more visible on camera. Um, so yeah, so for tonight's lesson, you will need a sword simulator. I'm going to be using a stick and pretending it has a shell. Um, but you know, if you don't have a sword of your own, a uh, walking stick is fine. Cricket bat is fine if you want to be like a massive tea about it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. Cool. So I'm just going to quickly pause recording and uh, I'm going to launch into it.